It is time for my favorite part of the week. Well, one of my favorite parts of the week, to be honest, is um, it is time for the European Rosales 1.9 playthrough. Now, 1.9 came out this morning. For those people who are not aware, ooh, ooh. there's the music. For a second there, I wasn't quite sure whether or not the music will start playing. But if you look very, very closely in the back... Oh, God, hold on. I need to fix that. That's one of the joys of, uh, of playing uh, on Steam. Every single time you start up a Steam game, it automatically turns on your Steam friends. I really need to fix that. It's uh, annoying me. There we go. Anyway, if you look very, very closely in the background here on the camera, right where my finger is over here, that's Crusader Kings 2. And that's running way of life. And we'll be going to be looking at that later today. It's uh, currently uh, slated for to be set up in about two hours. Five o'clock local time here in Stockholm, Sweden. But in the meantime, we're going to be playing some Europa Universalis 4. And with the soothing voice of myself, we're going to be out here observing the world as always. Now, for those people that weren't here last week or the week before, we actually have ourselves... Actually, was it last week we started this? Yes, it was last week when we started this. My apologies. Um... Obviously, before this, we had uh, Crusader Kings 2 running for quite a while, and a lot of the mechanics that are uh, available in uh, Way of Life were actually running in that beta campaign that we were uh, putting out on towards YouTube. Nobody ever really picks up on these. Uh, we put so many things out there because, you know, um, you know, so, you know, the some so many things are going on in these things and sometimes people like to completely and utterly decompile everything they see in these broadcasts but then all of a sudden they realize you know they miss all the really obvious stuff and tonight in way of life you will see a whole bunch of stuff that you're like oh man i totally saw that shit before and i didn't realize that was something new well it's pretty cool, to say the least. Anyway, Way of Life uh, will be broadcasted at uh, 5 o'clock little time here tonight. So it's uh, it's it's quite good. Anyway, 1.9. We're playing it right now. Uh, actually, that's not entirely true we're playing 1.9. We're actually playing a more advanced version of 1.9 at the moment. Um, obviously, development is continuing, you know... Pretty much continuously, as like we always say, as long as people keep on buying expansions, we will continue to develop. And in 1.9 was pretty much an, a uh, a gift from us to you, saying, "Hey, you know, there's there were some issues in Art of War here. This is fixing it. See that stuff that Roomba posted here? We'll we'll go out and fix that. Those issues, no problem whatsoever. Here, I have some additional features being thrown in there." And uh, while we're at it, let's quickly take a look. That we have the disaster system, which is now which is now available. Uh, for users to play with, of course, the stability and expansion window has been overhauled a little bit as well. So, yeah, but the disaster system basically allows you to have a little bit more control of what the hell is going on in your uh, in your kingdom and what to expect when, where, and how, and have that bar tick up slowly but steadily with all the fear in the universe. Anyway, this is beta, uh, very much beta, and uh, there's something that we need to say. Full disclosure, you know, real talk to you guys. This is most likely not going to be the most stable experience in the universe. It's a beta product that we're playing right now. What you're seeing right now, if there's anything new, it may or may not actually make it to the final, uh, to the final version, whatever uh, the next patch is going to be. But we're always tweaking small things, you know, uh, changing small things here and there. Oh, well, actually, small things. I'm quickly going to go. I actually have eight pages of patch notes lying in front of me right now that we're slowly but steadily going to go over. So there's quite a lot of stuff to go over. Anyway, let's get take a look here. And specifically, somebody in the chat is asking, what about England? Yes, what about England? What actually are the disasters that England will have to do? Well, this English Civil War is definitely a thing here. Uh... First of all, IFX asks, does this work for the English Civil War? And there it is. Civil War can happen under the following conditions. Uh, no current disasters, no Regency Council, have less legitimacy than 50, which is no longer applicable. I have an average uh, non-overseas autonomy of 10% or higher. And uh, the following unrest, plus 10, which is huge, to say the least. Uh, I'm quickly going to take a look here at his, it's York. Which means that the War of the Roses hasn't actually fired yet. And I believe War of the Roses is actually one of the functions here in the disasters that at least can break, uh, can come up. However, of course, right now with a National Universe of Minus 1, doesn't really have to worry all that much. Also, his vassals, he has managed to vassalize Holland.
That would explain why Holland is so big, because he's been vassal feeding the Netherlands, or at least Holland, because the Netherlands is not really a thing in this game. And lo and behold, um, somehow Brabant is one of the biggest powers within the Low Countries. That is beyond strange. It's, uh, yeah, it's not exactly weird. Somebody asks, hey, Paradox, do you eat honey only when the beekeeper blows its smoke on the hive? You should know this. You know, you're all learned individuals. You love your history. You love your bees. My God, not the bees. Ah, uh, etc. I'm wearing a bear suit. For those people that don't get that reference, please go and brush up on your Nicolas Cage films. Um, yeah, I, no, we, we do not eat honey. Some of them drink it in their tea, but... Uh, last time I checked, we didn't have any fire alarms going off, so no smoke has actually been... Uh... Yeah. Is having a rose a requirement for War of the Roses disaster? You are absolutely hilarious. Um, well, War of the Roses, obviously... Uh, the Obviously, the roses, the white and the red rose. The Lancasters and uh, the white rose, obviously, which is the Yorkists are playing out here in, the, in Great Britain. Castile, so far... Yeah, they're taking up Aragon. They'll be uh, quickly taking a look here at Castile. They're currently tech level 5. They'll be forming uh, Spain somewhere in the near future. They'll be uh, absolving Aragon quite quickly. And even Portugal is not doing all that well in this particular game. Um, so, let's take a look here. Um, I watched that film. Hold on. I watched that film recently. Paradox to be clear. No dynamic, dynamic revolution flags in 1.9. I don't think it's on there already. Uh, why do you recommend it? I recommend The Wicker Man because of the absolute sheer insanity that that film is. Go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, this is the this is the remake for Nicolas Cage with Nicolas Cage. It is absolutely staggering. And oh my God, England is about to get their advisor cost minus twenty five. That is huge already. In addition to having the Royal Navy and the uh, Ordnance. Um, nas uh, national ideas, they will be able to get their innovative ideas quite quickly, and considering they are tech level 6, they're about to get tech level 7, that is really quick. They've been rushing innovative ideas right off the get-go. Uh, prestige Decay, minus 1, Missionary Cast, minus 25, Technology Cost, minus 5, Possible Advisors, that's good. Uh, innovative ideas, well, some stuff there. So, pretty good. Pretty good overall. Uh, let's take a look here at some of our other players. Let's go to Wissington and Songhai, because, uh, you know, he is the project lead on this on this particular title. He originally started out as, I believe, a modder for Europa Universalis Rome, which came out a long time ago, and he basically worked on that for a very long time to improve the game as such. And now, he is, now, now he's managed to get himself uh, pretty much hired by Paradox. Not so much hired, but he's actually leading pretty much what is our largest game series that we have. Obviously, he did uh, quite a lot of stuff with Crusader Kings 2+, Plus, uh, and now has moved on to EU4, and he's yeah been really, really good with this sort of thing. Hmm. Favorite small country to play? Th um, the f my favorite OPM to play? Difficult, difficult question. Let's go to the HRE. I really enjoy playing the HRE. However, if I had to pick a nation that I'd like to play that is small, I would have to go with... Hmm, I am not going to go say Teodoro because that is the obvious obvious answer. I would have to say Friesland. Uh, Friesland, which is currently uh, occupied by uh, Brabant. Um... They are a merchant republic starting at 1444 and are really, really strong right off the get-go. But they do get uh, they do get rivaled by a lot of uh, players around them like Gelra and uh, Utrecht, uh, which causes issues. And obviously, we have Munster there as well, which starts off with two territories, I believe. But everybody around them generally rivals Friesland quite early on. They're really fun to play, and they can turn into the Netherlands, uh, merchant republic Netherlands down the line, which is quite good. Uh, uh, Ulm, no, I, I'm, yeah. does Ulm even have its own ideas? That's probably a good question. I don't even know where the hell, oh, there it is, Ulm. Ulm, I believe they have their own ideas. Oh, they've got German traditions, okay. 
Um, but in the meantime, though, let's go over some of these patch notes. Free features in 109. 109 has a slew of free features. Ooh, Songhai is a looming disaster. Uh, Peasant War is uh, in the middle of ticking up. Uh, that's not looking good. Manpower less than 25%. That is pretty much correct right there. And no current disaster. So basically, if you have a manpower less than 25%, it's going to cause issues. And quickly looking over here. Currently, 2% progress. Progress, uh, stability less than 1. Plus 1. Number of loans, at least plus 10. So he's got a lot, bunch of loans. Uh, quite a lot of them, actually. But the fact that he has uh, managed to... Uh, he's on the verge of integrating Timbuktu into Songhai, which is going to allow him to get full control of this in pretty much, yeah, most of the control of this trade network, especially in Timbuktu. That's a huge amount of trade that is, uh, he's on the verge of getting. Um... How do you pronounce the Netherlands so good? I believe you'll find it is so well. Um, my apologies. If I do have to correct your grammar there. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a game that's relatively advanced. I do not uh, indulge in uh, stuff. Anyway, three features. Straight fleet in the same node and now, and now on the same mission from the same country will now automatically merge. If either fleet is set to go home at war, uh, the merged fleet will... Uh, also have this setting. So basically what happens here? Songhai is now at war. They have gone to war with Kotoko and Yao, which is down... I have no idea where that is. Kotoko and Yao. Where the hell is that? Take Kotoko. Kotoko, where are you? All the way over here. Oh! All the way over here. Is this one of your... Yeah, it's a vassal. So that makes sense. Um, Kanemburunu is, uh, is a vassal. We also have another vassal here in Katsina. Are they being integrated right now? I'm quickly taking a look here over at my, over the diplomats. He is trying to appease the, um, the Portuguese as much as possible, which is probably something he should do, because the Portuguese sooner or later are going to come down and take Yolof. Uh, but if we talk about the fleet stuff, let's go over towards England, because they currently, uh, at least one would assume that they have the largest navy in the world. Let's take a look here. England, yeah, 49th, nearly, uh, pretty much the biggest one. So basically what happens here is, if we go into a fleet, uh, he's currently a mothballed, his, uh, the rest of his fleet, but if we take a look here, those are the cogs, where's the trade fleet, there it is. So if you would split up this trade fleet into two sections, and you would tell it, hey, go patrol, uh, go push trade in the, in the channel here which is uh, the English Channel node, which is now shared by the Netherlands and, uh, the, and the English. If you would say, push it in here, and then you send another fleet to do exactly the same thing, they will merge, and then in time of war, they will not be as vulnerable. If you have the fleet selected in such a way that it will go back to, cor uh, to port, uh, if the second fleet joins in, it will also get that uh, modifier. So basically, all fleets will, will head back to port when that happens. It is uh, quite good there, to say the least. Will there be a Crusader Kings 2 sale on Christmas? I do not know. You better go and check out the uh, Paradox uh, Christmas calendar. If you go on towards the... Uh, uh, if you go towards the bottom of the page here on the Twitch channel, uh, Twitch channel, there's a big button saying Holiday Calendar. Just click on that and you will find out whether or not there's any deals currently going on for the game. Which is pretty cool. Still, um, the whole feature that was one of the things that was requested by um, by our good friend uh, Arumba, and we will most likely have uh, an update on that particular piece of content later on. And I like how the chat suddenly has uh, divulged into culture bears should be polar bears. This is not Jan Mayen. We're not playing Victoria 2. I've already said too much. Um, other other features. Uh, you can now play as released vassals in Iron Man. This is big. This is really big for uh, company uh, countries like the following. If we quickly go over towards Hungary, which is in the which is in the process of being partitioned, if we go over towards Hungary, and uh, if we go towards Hungary and we look at their vassals, Serbia, Croatia. Here we go. 